The Walking Dead 804 Some guy. analyzed. Back in episode 802, we saw a walker that was an Easter egg of the governor from season 3. Right after Michonne killed his zombie daughter and Rick ripped through Woodbury to rescue Glenn and Maggie. Now this might be clever foreshadowing as well because the governor's image was shattered after that defeat and he hid away from his people similar to King Ezekiel by the end of 804. Now think about it. One is good, one is evil. A king and a governor both faking who they are and putting on a front and a defeat crushes both as well. Now this episode isn't drowning in symbolism like the others, it's pretty straightforward. The kingdom is gutted by a crushing defeat. Simple. The beginning and end of 804 beautifully showcases the before and after, highlighting the worst of war. I love it. Daniel, loading up represents the loyal soldier. Alvaro, I hope I pronounce his name right, represents our sons and daughters, our children we send into war. The woman with the flower represents our mothers. The man with his wife and baby represents our fathers. Jerry, there's a before and after, as well as Carol, a before with a slight smile and obviously the after. Now Ezekiel's entrance, before and after, in front of his people is excellent. It is shot to perfection. Before the war, he walks with Shiva by his side. And after, he walks without Shiva, his loyal pussy. Before battle, he approaches Ben's brother Henry the same way he does after. A hand on his shoulder and everything, the angle of the camera and all that. Now before the battle, he gives Henry some verbal reassurance. After the battle, Battle, he is speechless and he simply walks away. Before the battle, he gives this big speech, surrounded by his people, the people that believe in him, and they will follow him into battle. Check out Carol, though. Remember, she's the one who left to go inside the building. She's also the one outside of this little circle jerk. <laughs> The camera pans up, and the before battle cuts to the aftermath, surrounded by his dead soldiers who died for their belief in him, the king. Now right from the start, 804 focuses on Ezekiel's fragile image. He prepares his day like an actor getting ready to perform on stage in some type of play. He's just some guy. And when facing a double mirror, which perfectly symbolizes the two faces of Ezekiel, he cracks his neck and literally transforms. Well, he doesn't crack his own neck like he breaks it, but you get what I mean? It's kind of weird. You don't really hear a crack. He kind of like flexes his neck, but you guys know what I mean. He cracks his neck and he literally transforms his expression from some guy to the confident snarl of a king. In the episode, the words of his savior, the one that looks like a mix between Jim Carrey and iDubbbz, we'll just call him Grinning Gunther. Yeah, that works. Grinning Gunther. All right, so his words cut deep, telling Ezekiel his tiger gave him everything. Without it, he's just some con man in a costume. Now, the savior uses his coat, his costume, and he throws it over the barbed wire fence so he can get over it. And then Shiva dies, leaving Ezekiel feel like it's all over. He truly is just some guy who conned people into believing something that wasn't even real. He tells Jerry to look at the walkers. That is real. Now, along with what's been mentioned, there were some truly excellent moments in 804, like Carrie Payton playing King Ezekiel. He puts a rock in his shoe as an actor to help with his limp to keep it realistic. Now, he did this after hearing Andrew Lincoln did the same thing in the past. We have Carol's callbacks, pretty epic. The way she surrendered was like an echo from season six, and we got a sneaky little season one callback, those sneaky bastards. Ezekiel wants to give up, and he tells Carol and Jerry to go ahead and leave him there, and Carol snaps back, no, you don't get to do that. Now, this echoes Dale's words to Andrea when she wanted to die at the CDC. He says, no, you don't get to do that. Come into someone's life, make them care, and just check out. 
Hmm, Carol cares. Caring Carol. Mm, Ezekiel. Mm. Then after the gun truck gets away, Carol hears Daryl's bike. And this is one of my favorites. I love it. The way they did this was perfect. The truck passes the camera. We have the music as it kind of hovers at the same time, swells a bit with the sound of Daryl's bike and then Rick passing by immediately after him. I love that friggin' scene. And these are the guns that these two have been searching for since 802. But the Savior said there's more in the pool, so will there be others that Rick and Daryl don't know about that are used to get Negan and the Saviors out of their situation? Or situation, the way that grinning Gunther the Idiot said it. Alright, so back to the excellent stuff and things. Ezekiel, breaking down just before Shiva comes to the rescue, tossing a walker out of the pit. Man, that was just epic. Now, Shiva leaps into the pit, saving them, just like how Ezekiel leaped into the pit to save her. Came full circle, and I love it. Now, this pit was also the reveal of the Robocop walker from A. This is what bleached their shirt and burned their skin and created all the blisters. These dumb walkers were just walking around in this this corrosive material. Gross green gunk even explodes out of their heads when Carol shoots them. <laughs> now on the flip side, there were some issues with this episode as well. After every single episode, I host a live after show on YouTube, and one map member mentioned the gunplay and how they didn't include any shell casings ejecting from the guns when they were shooting. Obviously, what, <laughs> what an idiot. Yes, Ronnie, when they were shooting, you dumb shit. <laughs> anyway, so I kept this in mind while rewatching the episode, and now it's ruined for me. So whoever brought that up in the live stream, thank you very much, because it looks terrible. It's a nitpick, sure, but it really crushes the realism. And to add insult to injury, go watch automatic guns being fired. Go watch a video if you can't run out your back door and fire off your own gun, and see how quick the magazines need need to be reloaded. And with some guns, if not most of them, they actually overheat with a lot of gunfire. Some of them even friggin' catch fire. And I love guns, and I never knew that. I knew some guns overheat. I thought it was, like, kind of rare, but I never knew, like, how common that shit is. Especially in war, if you're baka 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 baka. I mean, it's crazy. Now, why is this not a part of the show? Not only is it realistic, but it can add a sense of tension and help most scenes. Using this realism could make every average gunfight feel more intense and more chaotic. I'm in love with this so much I just put a scene in my recent comic book, I'm doing it right now. Call the artist and tell him to pump his frickin' brakes, cause page one of issue number two is gonna have a gun catching fire cause it's overheating, cause that shit is awesome. Okay, snap out of it, Ronnie. Also, I do love the Shiva moments in this episode, but it is hard to suspend the disbelief that those walkers could take down a tiger and that quick in that type of way. And finally, I praise the look of the post-apocalyptic world in episode 803 that they're building up in this franchise since time has gone by. Then, in 804, again, it looks great, but also looked so damn familiar it was distracting. So I looked closely at this image, and then I looked closely at this image, and it's the same damn road! <laughs> it's not a huge deal. I mean, nor does it ruin the scene. It's just a touch distracting. AMC, you really couldn't spend a little more for another freaking part of the road? I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, with that said, I do gotta give credit where credit is due. Carol's sneak attack. Now, yes, with a drop ceiling, it's so weak. There's no way you're gonna sit up there. You're gonna fall right through it. However, Carol was actually by a wall, which would definitely give some type of support. And they get points for realism with Carol grabbing extra ammo. Now, this was something they utilized in the dialogue as well. Carol asked them if they have any ammo because she has their buddy's ammo. And this is absolutely ridiculous that it is only brought up because it's part of the conversation. I think every character with an automatic gun should have no less than five to ten magazines. A lot of these people in this war don't even seem to have one extra magazine, not like tucked in a pocket or hanging out somewhere. Now that I noticed it, there's no way I'm not going to unnotice it, so I'm probably going to be nitpicking on that for the rest of any friggin' TV show ever or movie. It's a done deal. And also, I want to give credit to where Jerry tries to break the chain. There's no way in real life he's breaking that chain, so I'm loving how they had that set up. And also the size of the bullet wounds on the big gun, just ripping the 
kingdom people apart. I think that was actually a nice, cool touch. Now, speaking of wounds and gore, I think a lot of fans are frustrated with the seemingly toned down, with the seemingly, 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 <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Seemingly, to a lot of fans think they're toning down the violence since the Negan kill, and we all know why. They said they were gonna, then they said, no, that's not true, we're not going to. And I will agree, some scenes definitely are suspect for getting trimmed down. But in 804, I don't think much was trimmed, except for the Jim Carrey iDubs guy getting split in two. That might have got trimmed, but other stuff, I really don't think so. I mean, we got this nasty and real-looking severed arm. Just grotesque and awesome. I mean, we got guts. Plenty of guts. We got close-ups of massive gunshot wounds. We got more massive gunshot wounds. And even more wounds with missing limbs. And limbs all over the place, speaking of missing limbs. And the mom, the flower mom, she has her guts spilling out like Negan was here. And when King Ezekiel shoots her in the face, it's not the usual small hole in her forehead. Nope. Her face explodes like King Ezekiel wanted to make sure that bitch got a closed casket. And last but not least, we're going to end this here, but for those who do not want any spoilers from the comic book about the fate of King Ezekiel, even though I think I almost or I did spoil this kind of sort of a little bit on the live after show, but here we go. Leave now or forever be spoiled. Idubs tells King Ezekiel that he's not going to drag his ass alive to the sanctuary. He's going to chop off his friggin' head and put it on a pike. Come on, what is this? Game of Thrones? Come on, Idubs, get your shit together. Now, this is, uh, this is odd. This is possibly foreshadowing <laughs> or misdirect if they decide to mix it up a little bit. But for now, I'm gonna go with foreshadowing because in the comic, King Ezekiel runs off to find his love Michonne. They're having a little bit of a spat and he runs off to profess his undying love and then he dies. <laughs> he gets his head chopped off and put on a spike for everyone to come and see the king's head ends up being part of a border wall. That's right. No more immigration in the world of The Walking Dead. There's a leader named Alpha, and she heard of Trump's wall, and she said, fucking put it up. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> oh, forgive me. I've been working so much. I, I think I, I gone crazy. Anyway, that's the end of this episode. And we have Rick and Daryl. They left off with this episode with an injured savior. And their story is going to continue in 805 as well as Negan and the saviors. So stay tuned. We're going to dive into 805 Analyzed. Come back next week for that. Or if this video is old, just go ahead and, you know, keep watching the playlist, I guess.